Earlier today, Catherine delivered her hotly anticipated first speech since being appointed chair of the Social Mobility Commission by Liz Truss in October, during which she laid out her radical new plan for social mobility, encouraging folk from lower income backgrounds to take smaller steps up the ladder rather than set their aspirations in possibly high things like, you know, entering Oxbridge. Look. You know, we imagine this idea that, oh, everyone needs to get to Oxbridge, everyone needs to be this top lawyer in the city. Um, but in fact, the reality is that we have a variety of children with a variety of different talents. Now, Catherine's comments have predictably sparked a backlash from all the usual left-wing critics with Harriet Williamson of The Independent writing... To me, this isn't about social mobility at all. It looks a lot like telling people from disadvantaged backgrounds to stop dreaming and stay in their lanes. Well, I'm delighted to say Catherine Bilsing, the woman herself, joins me now live. Catherine, you might as well respond directly to that. That's not what I thought you were doing, but it is what a lot of the critics have leapt upon today. Yes, well, I think that's because they don't really have any respect for people who do uh, a whole variety of different jobs. And it's precisely that that I think needs to change. Um, fact is that, as I said in that clip, uh, at, in any school, you've got children with a whole bunch of different talents. Can you imagine saying to a child, you need to get to Oxford, but if you don't get there, well, your life is worthless. Not much point in trying after that. I mean, of course, children who want to go to Oxford ought to apply to Oxford and brilliant, please do. And that's exactly what we do with our children who are wanting to do that. But not everybody wants to become a top banker in the city or a top lawyer. And uh, as I pointed out in my speech to the audience there, I was saying, well, many of us in the audience are not top bankers. We're perfectly happy. I love being a teacher. I love being around children. I'd be miserable as a banker. And there's something wrong with our society when all we recognize as being good is someone who's gone from the bottom right up to the top in terms of income. It's not just about earning lots of money. It's about living a worthwhile life. And it's about finding a career, a job that's going to give you satisfaction and purpose so that you're a happy person. And people have a variety of talents and it's right that they should be able to do what they want to do. Um, and so, of course, I wasn't saying, I mean, I never said we shouldn't be encouraging children to go to Oxford. Of course, we should encourage children to fulfill their talents. But everyone can't go to Oxford. I mean, we all can realize this. 90, 95% of my kids at school are not going to be applying to Oxford or Cambridge. It doesn't mean their lives are over. <laughs> it means that they're going to live purposeful and fantastic lives uh, without uh, attending Oxford or Cambridge. <laughs> Yeah, so let's talk about our definition of success and, and maybe actually as a society, we have to change our definition of success because I don't think, I mean, a, a vast uh, amount of the most successful people I know never went to university, by the way, in the first place. Exactly. Exactly. Like, not everybody wants to go to university. Not everybody does A-levels. People want to do a variety of different things. And the fact is, Sometimes, you, you know, you want people to be as socially mobile as possible. You don't want people to be prisoners of, of the circumstances of their birth. And sometimes they want to make shorter mobilities. They don't need to do this massive long stretch so they become some, you know, big CEO and is eating in expensive restaurants in the city. I mean, some people, I mean, one of the big things I spoke about was geography. You know, if you're, you're born in Lancashire and you want to stay in Lancashire, you don't want to come down to London and make an absolute fortune and be super rich and famous. Well, that, that's great. I mean, you should be allowed to do that. And the problem we have as a society, we tend, we tend to only respect those people who end up in these top jobs that earn them lots of money. And, and that's not right. We've got things upside down because it's about living a life that's worth living. And it's fascinating, really, that I say that. And then a whole bunch of people here, you're telling people to stay in their lanes. And I think that has to do with the way they feel about people uh, who aren't doing jobs that they really respect. And that's a problem. And, and that's what I'm kind of taking on here. Um, because if we stopped just looking at the few, because it's only the few who are going to end up perhaps at Oxford or Cambridge or perhaps in being some top banker. The many, however, 
are going to do a whole variety of different things. Uh, some of them not going to university, some of them going to different universities. And, and we should be celebrating their successes just as much as we would celebrate that person who ends up as a top banker. I couldn't agree more. How do you deal with the issue of kids or teenagers or young people who say to you, uh, I want to be the next Kim Kardashian, I want to be a film star, I want to be a social media influence, I want to be a TV presenter, because I get a lot in my own life. And my approach is to say, look, I think it's great to aim for that, but you also need to think about the alternatives because it doesn't happen. Uh, to a lot of people, that level of success. But sometimes people criticise me for that and say, oh, you're trying to dash this person's dream or you're not being supportive enough. Yeah, no, uh, you, you, you say exactly the right thing. I mean, of course you can support them to do X, Y and Z as well, but they must uh, make sure that they are working hard at school and getting a good set of qualifications so that they have doors open to themselves. That is particularly the case if you come from a more disadvantaged background, because the fact is there is inequality in society. It is There's no doubt that uh, income, is, there is some kind of correlation between income and the, the kind of success that you will have. You know, if you, if you grow up in a richer family, you will probably have an easier time in terms of uh, choice of careers and so on later on. And so the more disadvantaged your background, the more you know it is that you really do need to work hard at school and make sure that you have some of those credentials and qualifications because people who are from um, uh, richer backgrounds can sometimes mess up in various ways and then they have a contact through their dad or their mom or whatever it is, mm -hmm. and then they manage to get, get on in life. Whereas many of my kids just won't have that. So we're very much pushing the idea that you've got to get yourself in a position where you're secure with some decent GCSE results. Um, and, and of course, life is complex. But one of the things we want to do on the commission is really look at the people who are bucking the trends. So, you know, yes, society is unequal, but how is it that some people are socially mobile despite that inequality? Because often we can confuse and conflate uh, uh, inequality with social mobility, and they're not the same thing. Inequality is how rich is the richest person, how poor is the per poorest person, what is the gap in between? And those might be really large, that gap, that gap could be large, but you might still get many people being socially mobile between the, in that gap. And, and that's what you, you need to aim for, is to try and encourage as many people to be as socially mobile as possible. Now, of course, you made the speech today as the chair of the Social Mobility Commission. Now, you're a government appointment. So how does that work? Do, do, do they back your speech? Is, is this something uh, that, that Boris Johnson and, and Liz Truss are in support of? Well... I don't know. <laughs> You'll have to ask them. I mean, we're entirely independent. And yeah. so uh, we say what we want. And then I suppose they decide whether or not they like it. I have no idea what, what they think of it. Um, and I don't, they're not one person. She might like it. He might not like it. I have no idea. Uh, we are independent and we have our own ideas and we push those forward um, in, in a way to hopefully have impact, not just on government, but also on families and people. Right now, we're trying to change the narrative. We're trying to uh, let people know, you know, that uh, social mobility isn't necessarily uh, uh, in decline. It depends on the data that you're looking at, but in particular, if you're looking at occupational uh, mobility, actually it's been stable for decades. And we want to get out some good news stories and think about, as I say, who's doing well? How are they doing well? We, As we move forward over the next year, we want to look at families, for instance, the importance of families. How do they impact on people's social mobility? You know, the early years and how they support their children then. And then schooling. You know, if you get your child into a good school in comparison to a not so good school, how does that impact on the child's life in terms of their upward mobility? Well, it is really important work. I loved the speech, I have to say. That was chair of the oh. Social Mobility Commission and, of yeah. course, Britain's strictest head teacher, Catherine Burble-Singh.